In this video, we're going to unbox, put together, and start running the ComGrow ComGo Z1 10 watt diode laser in cardboard, wood, and some different metals. We'll be using the most popular laser softwares, Lightburn and Laser Gerbil, and be comparing them throughout the video. It's my first time running a diode laser, so if you're new to it or thinking of getting one, you might find this helpful. I've got some experience with the design softwares you'll see here, but none whatsoever with the diode lasers or the software required to run them. The chapters in this video are outlined in the description, so feel free to skip ahead if any of this doesn't interest you. Comgro sent me this laser, and in return they asked I make an honest video about it. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but also have no experience with diode lasers, so make sure to take my opinions with a grain of salt. I'm not going to do a detailed step-by-step -step video on how to assemble this thing because there's a lot of great videos out there. Um, but this is the main box that everything was sent to me in. I think if you just order the machine with the 5 watt laser, you get that first big box. Maybe that's what it comes in. But I also got two other boxes. One has the cylindrical roller attachment and the other has the upgraded 10 watt laser. Now the cylindrical roller attachment is really cool because um, it lets you engrave things like coffee mugs. I've seen people do wine glasses, pop cans, anything really cylindrical or that you can make roll on those rollers. This here is the, uh, the 10 watt laser. It comes with some wood, not really sure what kind it is. This is the main laser body. And it also comes with some super slick stylish glasses to protect your eyes. Um, this is the main box. This is the machine itself. There's nothing uh, under this. This is everything that comes. The gantry is fully assembled, which is great. These first two bars I'm taking out are the Y-axis slides. This is what the, uh, the the roller bearings kind of ride on. And then those uh, second two kind of thicker supports are kind of in the X direction, the front and the back supports. It comes with some really nice blue anodized feet, uh, a little bit more wood to play around with. Um, and uh, here's a little USB stick, which you know what? I don't know what's on it. I've never opened it up. That's the standard 5 watt laser. And um, you know, you got some more communication cables in here. There's also power cable, there's a little power supply in this white box. And uh, the gantry comes fully assembled, which is really kind of super great. You just kind of slap it on the thing. It comes also with an instruction manual, which is, I found it pretty useless, but they, Comgro links you to some really useful um, videos online on how to assemble this thing and you know any questions you might have, let's say. So I'm uh, not really a shot against them there. Um, this is me assembling the frame, really super easy. It's just a few screws. Uh, Aurora Tech has a great video on how to put this thing together. There are two kids, brother and sister, who make, uh, you know, some tech review videos and they are really, really great. They really helped me put this thing together. So thanks for that, guys. Uh, this is, I guess, the brain power box of the uh, of the computer. Goes on with two little screws. These are the blue aluminum anodized feet, which are also pretty slick. They got a nice design that lets you get the Allen key out of the way when you're putting it together. And then there's a nice little cable clamp to keep the routing out of the way as the gantry slides back and forth. So the only thing left to do here is to put the belts on around the stepper motors to move the gantry. It's a little bit finicky, but not so bad. There's a nice simple little system here to clamp down the ends of the belts. And uh, it's that little screw as it threads through that square nut, it just kind of starts pushing down on that belt and locks it into position. Super nice and simple. This is the Z-axis gantry. Uh, it's, it, I guess it's worth mentioning that the Z axis isn't powered on this machine. It's manual. And I think it's totally fine because, uh, whatever you're engraving, you know, you kind of set it in the right position and it is not a super precision thing. You just kind of set it, I believe two millimeters away. Um, so far I've never had any problems. I kind of do it by eye or use a little two millimeter shim. Um, you know, and then you just twist these things down with your thumb to lock it in position. And I've never had any problems. There's a signal and, uh, power ports here on the laser you plug the cables into here. I'm plugging the cables into the Y axis motors and there's the power cable. And again, I, within, you know, five minutes of having this thing hooked into laser gerbil, everything just kind of worked. Now, one little extra step that I took was to clamp this machine down to a heavy MDF board. This is a three quarter inch MDF board and these little aluminum clamps don't come with the machine. These are just some, uh, it's a little bit of aluminum I had laying around and put some holes in. Um, the, the machine itself is really light, so I wouldn't want to bump it while it was engraving. And then this MDF board is also going to double as a spoil board. We're going to burn a uh, grid pattern into it in a little bit here, which is helpful when positioning parts. And as far as assembly goes, that's uh, pretty much it. Now, I know that wasn't a detailed step-by-step, -step, but I did show every step it took to put this thing together. And it is quite simple. If I were to do it again, it would probably take me all of 10 minutes uh, tops to do it again. Now, something I wasn't expecting is how smoky it gets. You know, these lines are not very deep. They're not very dark. 
but it still gets pretty smoky. So I had to sort of scramble midway through this burn to get a fan and open the garage door. This using a diode laser, uh, you know, from my very primitive experience is not something you want to do without proper ventilation. I'd imagine pretty much anything you're cutting is, or engraving is going to generate a little bit of smoke and it definitely smells a lot more than, uh, you know, I guess than it visually looks on the video, but yeah, some, uh, ventilation is definitely something you want to get. And with laser gerbil, when you import an SVG file, you get this screen and it's really simple. All you got to put in is what speed do you want to run the laser at and what is the power you want to run the laser at. And um, you can import one SVG file after another and you get this window and you can put in different parameters if you want to score something or if you want to engrave something or if you want to cut something out. Like here I'm doing some test burns where I'm just increasing the power to see what it takes. You know, what's the difference in power it takes to score a piece of cardboard or this is just some thinner cardstock, I guess. But and uh, what it takes to cut out a square. So in this one you see here, you know, the square fell right out and I knew then, you know, what kind of power does it take to cut a square out and what does it take to score some. So I thought this could be really cool to make some packaging. And uh, here I'm cutting out uh, packaging. Some lines are score lines, which is what you see here. But then what you see next are uh, the lines it takes to cut out this, um, the outline of the package. So there you go, the laser's starting to cut the outline. And uh, so this was just two SVG files, one on top of the uh, one on top of the other, imported back to back in Laser Gerbil. And every time you import an SVG file, you get that window. You put the settings in you want, and in that way you can uh, make things like packaging. But in Laser Gerbil, it's pretty painstaking. So um, we'll get to that a little bit later. But this is the finished product, and the detail is there. You can see uh, between the tabs there. There's maybe a millimeter or less, and it really just kind of fell out and I was pretty pleasantly surprised by it. I mean, it's my first experience with a diode laser, so I wasn't sure what I was going to expect, but it did a really good job. And you can uh, fold these things up and they went together really nicely. Now I've got a really detailed video on how I designed this parametric box generator in SolidWorks. And I just kind of looking around the shop, I grabbed a few things and made some text uh, test boxes for a couple things laying around. And it all worked really well. You know, there you see a stack of end mills, there's some coasters, and then a little driver bit case in the back. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I could see this being useful for people, you know, who need to make a lot of packaging or something. So to burn wood, I did much the same thing. I wanted to test, you know, what would score a line, what would engrave a line, what would cut out the wood. And so I did the, the same kind of power and speed test, but this time I was using um, light burn instead of laser gerbil. And man, is it ever worth it? It's a couple bucks. I think it's uh, it's forty or fifty bucks. I'm in Canada, so dollars uh, doesn't take you as far as it does in the U.S. But uh, yeah, it is just so much easier to use than laser gerbil. There's no having to process SVG files in Illustrator or Inkscape or anything like that. If you're at all interested in this kind of thing, I would encourage you to take a look at the video I've got linked in the description. That packaging video because there's a, there's a lot of kind of DXF and image processing I do in Illustrator that Lightburn, if you're using Lightburn, you can totally skip it. So this screen you see here is Lightburn, and uh, it's got the option to put all those different squares on different layers. And on different layers, you can use different power and speed settings of the laser. So this is kind of the way that I envision this whole system working. You know, you have some kind of line drawing on uh, 2D line drawing in front of you and you select the lines and you're able to select what kind of, not feeds and speeds, I guess, but what power and speed settings from the laser you want. And this is just so much less painful than it is in laser gerbil. I mean, laser gerbil is free, so there's definitely something to be said for that. Um, but if you've got 40 or 50 bucks to spend on light burn, it is absolutely worth it. And I would recommend it with my very limited experience. So I've sort of found that, that there's really two different things you can kind of do with these diode lasers. You can either engrave an image where you're using the laser sort of like a 3D printer where the head moves back and forth and slowly builds uh, like a grayscale, in this case, a grayscale image for you. Um, or you can, you know, trace lines uh, like line drawings, DXF files or SVG files at different powers and speed settings if you want to cut something out of wood, let's say, or you know, make an inlay like you're going to see me fail at shortly here. But if you're interested at, I guess, etching images into things, laser gerbil is actually quite good. And I'd recommend at least trying it before you go out and spend the money on light burn. But if you're like me and mostly interested in cutting things out or tracing line drawings like DXF or DWG files, 
you'll do yourself a really big favor by getting Lightburn because if you use Lightburn, you you know you go to your CAD software, you export a DXF or a DWG file, and then a Lightburn, you bring that file into Lightburn directly, and you can select the different lines um, and run different lines at different power and speed settings. But in Laser Gerbil, if you want to do that, you've got to export a DXF or a DWG file. And Laser Gerbil doesn't intake DXFs or um, DWG files directly. It likes SVG files, which at least in SolidWorks, I haven't tried this in Fusion, so I can't speak to that. But if you're using SolidWorks, um, as far as I know, you can't export a SVG file directly. So, you know, think about the packaging where some of those lines I scored and some of the lines I cut out. Well, SolidWorks and Fusion are really good at spitting out a flat pattern, either in the form of a DXF or a DWG file or something. But then you've got to bring it into Illustrator or Inkscape and make two SVG files in the same positions, by the way. Um, one with just the outlines, one with just the bend lines, and then import them separately, sort of one at a time into Laser Gerbil. And when you import the bend lines, uh, you know, you, you, you input the power and the speed settings. And then afterwards, you have to import the outlines and with different power and speed settings. So it's just a lot more manual and it might not sound like a big deal, but uh, I'd encourage you to try it. It's kind of a big pain, um, whereas in in Lightburn, you import that DXF file directly. You just put the uh, the bend lines and the outlines on different layers. They've got different speed settings, and you hit go. It takes about 5% of the time as it does um, in Laser Gerbil. But if you are interested in just burning images, like if you want to upload a, a photo and make a grayscale version of it or something, Laser Gerbil is really good, and you might not need Lightburn. So from what I understand, they're kind of better at different things. And it uh, really just depends on what you want to do. So next I'm going to be playing around a little bit with uh, wooden inlays. I'm going to make a little star pattern and then try to press these spikes into that star pattern just to see how tightly the edges line up. With a little bit of test cuts, I found that the kerf of the laser, so like the width of the laser as it's cutting the wood, is uh, about 11 thousandth of an inch at this thickness. And if you've ever seen a wire EDM machine running in metal, they're incredibly accurate. Here you've got, you know, a metal on metal inlay, and when they press together, you can't even tell that there's an inlay. Now they are cut from different pieces of metal and they're they're ground together on a surface grinder, but still uh, you can't even see any daylight once the pieces are pressed together. They're absolutely perfect. Uh, this is probably the most accurate metal working technology out there. Um, and it's amazing. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a torture test on this laser and see how accurate it can be in this kind of a scenario. So here we're cutting out the spikes that we're gonna try fitting into sort of the female star pattern that I cut previously before this. Now these have to be a little bit oversized than the shapes that fell out of the star because the kerf is 11 thousandths wide. So I oversized these pieces 11 thousandths and next I'm gonna try pressing them into that star. And they fit pretty tightly, pretty nicely. I wasn't really able to get them all the way in by hand, so the next shot's gonna be me kind of pressing them in with a vise. But uh, you can see some daylight, which I was expecting, but they sit pretty nicely, and I wonder what a little bit of wood filler, maybe a little bit of sanding would do if you wanted to do something like this. So here we're using the help of a vise just to help push those pieces all the way in. Now when I take this out, I want you to keep your eye on the uh, the top spike, sort of the bottom left of the top spike, and I'll get a little bit better focus in a moment here. But you're able to see daylight through the piece, so uh, it's not absolutely perfect. It's really close, like those pieces are hard to push out by hand, um, but it's not perfect. A little bit of wood filler and sanding I'm sure would go a long way, and I didn't spend any time squaring this machine. I just screwed it down to the spoil board, and this is what I got. So I'd be curious to hear from anybody who knows a little more about diode lasers to, you know, say, can I get a little bit better with this or is this the limitation but ultimately it came out really nice and this is totally a torture test for this machine next i wanted to try marking some metals so let's start with some anodized aluminum cards you can get these on amazon and they're about the size of a business card i measured them at 3.387 inches long by 2.127 inches tall so let's mock up a fake little business card in adobe illustrator with a few different size fonts and a logo to see how the laser does with some different levels of detail you can also do this in Inkscape, by the way, which is free to download and perfect for stuff like this. You can do it in other softwares too. Ultimately, we're just after generating a line drawing to pass to Lightburn or Laser Group. So you can really use any software that'll generate the appropriate file. We'll save this as an SVG file to pass into Lightburn. One of the strengths I found that Lightburn has over Laser Gerbil is the number of files that'll let you import and process. 
To me, the DXF file is particularly useful since CAD programs like Fusion 360 and SolidWorks can export DXFs easily. So let's burn the outline into the spoil board so we'll know where to place the aluminum stock. We'll put the card down where we marked and start the program. In Lightburn, you can select the different elements of an SVG file and put them on different layers, which you can then burn at different laser power and speed settings, which I found really useful, and it isn't so much the case with laser gerbil. So for the first shot at engraving the black anodized aluminum card, let's try setting the 10 watt Comgro laser at 600 millimeters per minute and 20% power. So this turned out, I think, maybe a little weak. You can definitely see the marking and the reflection especially, but uh, it's not so obvious in when you're looking at it directly or you're not getting a reflection. So flipping it over, let's keep the speed the same, but triple the power to 60%. And I think this is a little better. It doesn't look so great here, but I later learned that wiping these with something like Windex removes little burn bits off the engraving that really makes it pop. The different colors engrave or mark pretty differently. I found myself playing with the power and speed settings every time when changing colors to get it just right. And still, it was obvious that some just don't mark as nicely as the others. The markings were all legible, but in some of them it was really like you had to find the right angle or reflection to see the detail. Both the blue and the black worked really well, and I think the blue is my favorite because there seems to be the most contrast from every angle. I think we found the resolution limit too. The DBO design title looks nice, but the smaller detail in my email address at the bottom looks like it was written with a fat tip marker. For a little bit of scale, the first letter, the lowercase a in my email address is 2.5mm tall and it's written in a pretty thin font. I think I remember hearing that the Comgro laser's beam is about 0.8mm square, which looks about right here. Ultimately, I was pretty impressed with all the cards, and I think some more time spent dialing in the power and speed settings would yield better results, but you should expect your lines to sort of look like this, written with like a 08 millimeter fat tip marker, let's say. Last, I wanted to try marking some bare metal. Let's try that business card logo into a brushed aluminum surface. We've got to manually move the laser up on the gantry because the piece is so thick, but it's really easy to do. And so the results here were kind of amazing in that nothing happened. I wasn't able to make any markings no matter what I did. I ended up at 100% laser power and 50 millimeters a minute laser speed, which is the most aggressive cut I've tried. This would heat up and burn right through quarter inch wood, but it doesn't even start to make a mark here. So all in all, the ComGro ComGo Z1 10 watt laser can do a lot of things. And I'm not sure I've even started scratching the surface of what's possible. But if you've seen anything in this video you might find useful, I'd feel comfortable recommending it. It's easy to assemble and even easier to use. And maybe most importantly, the people at ComGro in China are super kind and helpful with any questions you might have. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video.